have the Google Sheet open or you're watching this YouTube video, you'll see the list of data is a list of about 100 rows of customer data. These are credit card customers, and there's only five columns of data, age, attrition, business travel, daily rate, and department. So this each row is the is an individual credit card customer, and we have a, f a few demographic columns about the customer, like their age, whether they, I had to look this up actually before recording this, whether they attrited or attrited, which is the past verb tense of attrition. So basically whether or not they stop becoming a customer or not. So it's a yes or no in that column. Then you have this business travel column, which includes values like travel rarely, travel frequently. So it's kind of like whether or not they're a business traveler. The daily rate is, I think it's kind of like their month or daily salary, if you broke it down by day. And then department includes things like sales, research and development. And it looks like that's those are the only values, but it's kind of like the, the department where that cut that um, consumer works in. So there's a bunch of other columns in the actual class project workbook, but in this example, I'm only going to show five columns. So we have these five columns and with these five columns, you can build a really basic pivot table by going to, I'm in Google Sheets now, going to data in the menu and then going to pivot table. And I'm just going to say in new sheet. And with this pivot empty pivot table, I can um, click on values, add values. I'm going to click on, let's see, let's say daily rate as the values. And we'll say average for this for the daily rate metric. Let's see here, average. And then for rows, I'm going to say department. So I can see the average of the daily rate for these different departments. So I can kind of get a sense of like, how much these customers make on a daily basis across human resources, research and development, and sales. Now, the important thing here is the data set that in this file and why it's important for the class project is this attrition column. So all we know in this column is whether or not the customer churned or not. So it's a no or yes, right? What if I want to figure out how many customers churned for these different departments. So I can remove the move remove the daily rate column and add the attrition column to my my values and I get a count, but this will just give me a count of all the values yes or no, which doesn't really make sense. I want to do I want to look at a count of the number of people who actually attrited. So you could do a calculated field, like um, I believe this works, where you can do a calculated field, and you can say, so I did, went to values, click on add, and then click on calculated field. You can say equals if attrition equals double quote yes, double quote comma one comma zero, and we click out. Looks like it whoop, didn't Looks like I didn't save. If attrition equals yes, then one comma zero, or parentheses, and enter. And I didn't like that. Maybe if, the, if I do a count. Yeah, so I actually, I don't even think this would work because we're looking at, no, it doesn't really work. Anyways, it's hard to do a, try to do a basic filtering on creating a calculated field where you're just trying to count the number of yeses or nos in that column. Now, what you could do is you could add the attrition column to the columns. So now you see in my columns, I have no, yes, grand total. And then I also have human resources, um, the different departments. And then within my values here, I can add, let's just say attrition, because I'm just doing a count. And now I can see the number of people that have turned in my yes column and no column. And if I want to figure out a percentage, the attrition percentage, I can say equals in cell E3. I can say equals the yes column divided by the grand total. And I'm going to do the autofill. And I can see here the research research and development department, only 14% churned while the sales department, people that work in the sales department turned 18.6% and overall 15% of my customers churned. 
So this works as a kind of ad hoc formula, but if I want to look at attrition percentage across any dimension of my pivot table, how do I do that without putting attrition in the columns? Because by having this manual formula in column E here that's outside of the pivot table, if I add another, let's say, uh, dimension to my row, let's say I add business travel for whatever reason, that doesn't really work, so let's just remove that. Um, let's try to add business travel. I think I have to actually delete these values. Anyways, it you can see how I, it would the normally in an Excel pivot table, when you add the extra, there we go, when, when you add the extra column to the rows or whatever, it overwrites your manual formulas that you do outside of the pivot table. So what is the trick here? So I'm going to remove attrition from my column. So now all I have is department in my rows. I'm going to go back to my pivot table, or sorry, my raw data set. And remember, my columns of data are only from columns A through E. In column F, I'm going to write a form, write a, the column header just count, and then put the number one in all of these values. So from cells F2 through F100, I just have the number one. And then in column G, I'm going to write attrition flag. And here I'm going to write the formula equals if the attrition column equals yes. Then I'm going to give this cell one, otherwise give it a zero. Do the autofill. So now all this attrition flag column in column G represents is if column B has a yes, then column G has the number one. If it's no, then it's zero. The important thing here is that I'm setting up my raw data so that my attrition flag is a number and so is my count. And let's see what I can do now with the pivot, the calculated field. I'm back in my pivot table. If I go to raw data, notice how my raw data expanded from A through E from A through G. So I need to change my raw data source from E100 to G100. And now if I look inside my, my values, you're going to see, or if, we, if you click on add on any of the rows, columns, values, or filters, you're going to see your count and attrition flag columns. And, and for value, I'm going to click on add, calculated field. And then I'm, for the formula, my calculated field, you can do this in Excel too. I'm going to write single quote. Oops, I'm going to write single single quote attrition flag. That's the attrition flag formula with the if statement that I made in column G. Attrition flag in single quotes divided by count, which is that count column which just contains a bunch of ones. And now you can see that I get the same attrition percentages in my new calculated field. I'm going to call this calculated field attrition percentage. And you can see this calculated field now is something I can drag and drop into my, my pivot table. And it's basically a part of my pivot table now. I don't have to worry about creating a manual formula. I'm just going to convert this to a percentage for now. I don't have to worry about creating an Excel formula or Google Sheets formula outside of my pivot table. I can just use this new calculated field. But the key thing here is that attrition flag is a one or zero. Count is always one. So by doing attrition flag divided by count, you're always taking a number that's a one or zero divided by a number that's always one. And by default in calculated fields, when you put these columns into the calculated field formula, I believe the Google Sheets and Excel, they automatically add a sum formula to that column. So it's just like right here, it says summarize by sum. I think if I change this to custom, you know, see how it does something weird, or I'm just like not doing something anymore. So by default, if you do sum, it sums up all the ones and zeros and divides it by the sums of a bunch of ones. And so that's how you're able to get the attrition percentage based on the attrition column, which is simply just a yes or no. And so now if I, let's say I add a column, or let's say I add to my rows, I also add the business travel uh, column or value, I can now break down my pivot table into even more granular 
attrition percentages based on whatever I want to drag into my pivot table, which is really cool to see. So that's how you can create a percentage based on a simple yes or no column, or this could be really any kind of value. It doesn't have to be yes or no. It could be any kind of value if you want to calculate percentages in your pivot table. So that's the uh, nice little tip and trick as a teaser for the advanced pivot tables class that I mentioned in this episode. And again, just going to make in one more final plug. Please take this advanced pivot tables class if you are trying to learn more about pivot tables, or if you have a colleague who is trying to learn more learn more about pivot tables, please share this class with them. 